6.30 p.m. at the 66 Grill and Tap House. <coughs> uh, <laughs> tap House, Tap House, right there. <laughs> tap House, all right. We're going to be singing and tapping out. <laughs> okay. Uh, the fellowship will include... I was just joking. I was just joking. Um, the fellowship will include food, family, and a fiesta. We will be covering our own meal uh, and expenses. RSVPs to Sister Ro uh, Tawana Rova. Uh, all interested new members are invited. The Youth and Young Adults Ministry uh, will be hosting Family Movie Night on Friday, February the 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we would like everyone to attend this event. Please invite your family and friends as we come together as a family to enjoy a beautiful evening of Christian fellowship. This event is for all ages and refreshments will be served. A movement will be shown in the sanctuary. Uh, for more information, please see Brother Lamar Robinson. Attention members, if you wish to have a printout of your 2023 contribution statement, please sign the list in the foyer. Also, if you have already signed the list, please check the box by the request list to see if your statement is ready and available. The Delta Arts Center um, are proud to announce our Invitational 2024 at DAC uh, Jury ex Exhibition. Uh, the exhibition will be held on January the 8th through March the 30th. It's going to be closing out uh, soon. Super Bowl Gathering. Uh, Super Bowl Gathering will be held on February the 11th at 6.30. I thought we were supposed to come a little bit early on that particular day. Five. Okay, it's not 6.30, it's at five for the Super Bowl gathering. Uh, but we want everyone to try uh, to be here for a devotional before the game. Please wear your favorite team jersey. Also, we're asking for a donation of $5 if you can give it to Brother Carter, Brother Connor, or Brother Lamar. 
uh, the five dollars to get up the freighter calls for snacks and etc. That uh, that concludes all of the announcements. We have some other announcements that you can avail yourselves to in our bulletins, and also we have a calendar of events that are of the activities that are occurring here at the Copper Road Church of Christ that we would like to invite you to attend. On yesterday, we had a, a day full of meetings, and someone left their uh, iPad along with their uh, charger, and I know that's important to some, so uh, we have this and, uh, for you to claim it or to pick it up uh, after service. That concludes the announcements. The Lord is in His holy temple, and all the earth keeps out for you. This morning's invocation will be taken from Colossians chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. Again, that's Colossians chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. And it reads, And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, <coughs> teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let us go to the Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly, grateful for today, Father, waking us up this morning and getting us up out of bed to come fellowship and praise your name, Father. Father, we're grateful for just getting us through the week, allowing us safety as we go out into the world, earning an income, going to school, and just existing in the world, Father. Thank you for putting that hedge of protection over us. Father, we come to you just asking that you guide us as we worship you, Father, this morning, worshiping your greatness, and that everything that we do from this point on throughout our worship service is decent and in order, allowing us to come to you in one spirit, Father. Father, just be with us. Uh, please forgive us of our sins that we have committed throughout the week, Father. And above all things, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, on the cross so that we may be forgiven of those sins, Father. All these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King let it rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. no, just let it rise. Let the Let it rise among us, let the spirit of the Lord let it rise, let it rise among us, let the praise of our King, let it rise among us, let it rise, no, oh, 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 say oh. Let us 
Spirit of the Lord. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise. Let it rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King let it rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. Just a little talk with Jesus. Just a little talk with Jesus. Y'all help me out there. Y'all help me out. Been a rough week. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then the light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. Now just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, and let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our pain is cry, he will answer by and by. Now when you feel the careful yearning as your heart to heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus, face it right. Sometimes I'm passing drear without a ray of cheer, and then I found down behind the light of day. Though the mist of sin may rise and hide the starry sky, but just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. And now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel the prayerful yearning as your heart to heaven is turning, you will find a talk with Jesus makes it right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. And I just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Well, I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night.
the message this morning has been taken from Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. Again, that is Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. And it reads, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. May the Lord bless the readers and doers of his holy and divine word. This morning, in response of reading, we take from Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. It will be found inside your bulletins and also on the screen above. And it reads, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall I cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. So then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Father in heaven, we believe and are baptized. Thank you for the good news of our salvation. Prosper us to live in your glory. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Understand. Restore my spirit, Lord, I need. Restore, Lord, to know that my heart is weary. Please help me, dear Lord, where I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, reveal my faith. Oh, restore my soul. Revive the fire, Lord. Revive the fire, Lord. Deep in my soul. Won't you please turn my desire to work in your fold? Well, I give my heart to God. Your zeal grow cold. Renew my love. Reveal my faith, oh, restore my soul. Renew my courage, Lord, renew my courage, Lord. Let me restore, yes, the door for my cup is empty. Reveal it, dear Lord, where we all doubts and fears with faith. So, oh, renew my love, reveal my faith, oh, restore my soul, restore my spirit, Lord, restore my spirit, Lord, as I need to restore, Lord, you know that my heart is weary, please help me, dear Lord, well, I stand. In need of more strength from your word, renew my love, reveal my faith, oh, restore my soul. Our Father, our Father, the all seeing, all knowing, and all power. Heavenly Father, we recognize you as the great God of heaven and earth. And Father, we are so thankful. May we all stand here on the time side of life on this day. Father, you have blessed us far more than we can understand. Your blessings to us go far and they go wide. They go through the day, they go through the night. Father, we just thank you. We just thank you. 
We just thank you one more time. Yeah. Heavenly Father, at this time, we're praying for those that are down on their sick bed. And at this time, we have our Brother Carpenter, we have Sister Clara Murray, we have Sister Shirley Murray. And Heavenly Father, there are many others that I can't call just at this particular time. But Father, we ask that you look down. Look down with mercy. Look down with your power. And strike those that are hurting and allow them all to, just let them all to get up off their sick beds and let them all recover. Yeah. Father, at this time, we're all, each and every one of us, standing right now in the need of prayer. Yeah. Father, we need you on our job. We need you in our home. We need you when we walk down the streets. Father, we need you when you can, when we come to service. And by us all standing in the need of prayer, we know that you will provide that prayer for each and every one of us. And once again, Father, thank you. It's just not enough. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your Son, Jesus, who died that shameful death. That we might have life and have it more abundantly. And Father, we are just so thankful that you've been so good to each and every one of us. And Father, we just thank you now for the, your manservant who's going to come before us today and deliver, and deliver us a word from the Lord. Because Heavenly Father, we need a word from the Lord. And Father, we just thank you now for our Carver Road. Thank you for all our leaders who go be up and beyond the call of duty to lead us. We thank you for the elders. We thank you for the deacons. And we thank you for all the family that's involved with those leaders also. And Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful that you allowed us just to have the presence of mind, to know where we are, to know what we're doing, and know what to do when we get there. Yeah. Father, we just, we just thank you for being so good to us. And we ask you now just to forgive us of those wrongs that we've done. Because Heavenly Father, we've said some things. And we've done some things. And above all, we've gone some places we had no business going. We went there anyway. And Father, we just ask that you please forgive us. Father, go with us through the rest of this service. Go with us through our message. And just allow us all to take it all in when we hear that word from the Lord. But we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Let us all respond by singing at this time. Amen. Amen. Turn it over to Jesus. Just turn it over to Jesus. Well, just turn it over to Jesus. He'll make everything all right. If you just turn it over to Jesus. Just turn it over to Jesus. Well, just turn it over to Jesus. He'll make everything all right. I once was lost in a world of sin, and Jesus came and took me in, you know, to pick me up, then he turned me around, and he made everything all right. If you just turn it over to Jesus, just turn it over to Jesus, well, just turn it over to Jesus. He'll make everything all right if you just turn it over to Jesus. Just turn it over to Jesus. Well, just turn it over to Jesus. He'll make everything all right. Turn it over and don't take it back. Amen.
Ready to live? Yes. Show song. We're gonna sing Golden Crown. We're gonna sing Golden Crown. Golden Crown. Y'all know Golden Crown. We're gonna sing it together. Watch ye there, oh you know not the day when the Lord shall call your soul away. And if you labor, striving for the right, you know that you shall wear a golden crown. to him for you, say you shall wear a crown. Don't you know that when I said the wind the trumpet sound oh, oh, oh you you shall wear a crown Don't you know that you shall wear a golden crown Now be not like the foolish virgins day for and you know not when So keep your left All trim and burning bright I know that you shall wear a golden crown Church in this for you Say you shall wear a crown And don't you know that when Say when the trumpet sounds Don't you know that you shall wear a golden crown? Now here at last you hold out till the end. You know that Jesus is an everlasting friend. And if I stay within the church, he has, you know that I shall wear a I say I shall wear a crown. If you believe it, you know that the wind. I say when the trumpet sounds, oh, I, I shall wear a crown. Don't you know that I shall wear a golden crown? Do you believe it in your heart? I say I. I said, I shall wear a crown. Don't you know that when I say, when the trumpet sounds, oh, I, I said, I shall wear a crown. Don't you know that I shall wear a golden crown? Turn to him and say, You. I said, you shall wear a crown. And don't you know that when, I said, when the trumpet sounds, oh, you, I said, you shall wear a crown. And don't you know that you shall wear a gold. I said, you shall wear a gold. I said, you shall wear a gold. As I journey through this land, sing me as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the prison Lord. Said many arrows pierced my soul from without within, but my Lord, he leads me on and through him I must win. Singing my cares off at home and land, 
Ghost. Tell him you know he will give me life. Well, Satan stands me, makes my soul turn my thoughts aside. But I heard my door, he goes ahead and leads for every time. Singing them all. Some reason 
She don't know me in the church. You know what it is? She doesn't know me. Uh, so, but I just want to make that disclaimer. I also want to make a disclaimer or sometimes we don't get the opportunity. We only do it on a one-on-one -on -one level. Um, and so I just want to make sure that I'm telling you, I really appreciate my wife and hard work that she does as a mother. You know, um, yeah. You know, one of the things I like about her before we got married is that she loves the Word of God. She loves good preaching. And so, you know, doing the symposium, she wanted to hear it too. A baby girl letter here. And so I appreciate her doing what she needs to do. Uh, and still wanting to urge and get the Word of God as a part of her life. Uh, I really appreciate that. And so uh, I thank you and I love you for being my wife and the mother of our child. All right. All right. I was, when he told me, he said, hey, I need you to, to, to preach. And I said, you know, I was thinking, I said, what, what do I want to say? Last year was, was piggybacking off of him, you know, keeping it in step with what he was trying to do, strengthen the church. And nothing wrong with that. The Lord opened the door for those sermons to happen and strengthen the church. But I said, what do I want to say? Uh, what does God call in my heart to say to Carver Road Church of Christ? But more importantly, but not just Carver Road Church of Christ, but what he calls to, on my heart to say. Because I'm in need of help just like everybody else is. I'm in need of the word of God that soothes my soul just like you are too. So when I preach, I'm just preaching to myself. You just happen to be listening. And so I was looking at Luke 9, 23. You probably thought to yourself, you probably said, okay, short term. One scripture. You must not be going anywhere. <laughs> if you follow along, you see what I'm going from. So you look at Luke chapter 9, verse 23, and I just want to read it for purpose emphasis only. And then we're going to get into the text. And I want you to bear with me as we dive into the word of God. Verse 23, he says, Then he said to them, If anyone will come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Powerful scripture of the word of God. But what I want to do, and I've already promised those in the back that I'm not going to move too far because we're limited right here. Gotcha. <laughs> what I want to do, I want to paint a picture to how we got to Luke chapter 9, verse 23. You see, sometimes we focus on the scripture itself, and it says that is powerful to the meaning. But there has to be some type of background to the word of God. It just didn't linger out there and says, well, I'm just going to put it out there and just take it as natural. But you've got to understand what is going on. So listen carefully. And let's look at the book, I mean, excuse me, book of Luke chapter 9. Stage 1. Goes to 9, chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. And I'll be reading from the NIV. He said, when Jesus had called the twelve to gather together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God. Listen carefully, he said, preach the kingdom of God. And to heal the sick, he told them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra, you turn the tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. And if people do not welcome you, shake the dust off your feet. I'm sorry, I said it with attitude. When you leave that town as a testimony against them. What I want to focus on is that when he talked to the twelve, he said, preach the kingdom of God. I'm giving you the authority and the power to preach the kingdom of God. So we're not there yet in terms of what he's talking about in terms of the church. <clears throat> church has not been established yet. But what he's telling them, he said, look, what you can do right now is continue to preach the kingdom of God. I'm letting you know this now. I'm giving you the power, I'm giving you the authority as men to go out there and show them who you belong to. That has always been through the beginning.
again, it says Genesis from the time to the revelation, is that the kingdom of God needs to be preached. Sometimes we focus and we fuss about the little entities about the things about the church. We talk about, well, we need to do this and we need to do that. What about the kingdom of God? Yeah. Tell the people you can come into this house and get the word of God that it soothes your soul. Yeah. Total 12, kingdom of God. Stage 2, 7 through 9. Now here, the patriarch heard about all that was going on, and he was perplexed, because some of them were saying that John had been raised from the dead, others that Elijah had appeared, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago had come back to life. Hold verse 8, just hold it to the side. But Herod said, I beheaded John. Who then is this I hear such things about and try to see him? Herod said, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on? I know I already took the life of John the Baptist. What am I hearing this stuff around the, the area about this person doing miracles? What is this I'm hearing about? The kingdom of God. What is I'm hearing about this? I've already took care of the problem. What is going on? You took care of the problem with John the Baptist, but you didn't take care of the problem with Jesus. Right. Jesus has his own timeline on what's going on. You're not going to rule here of what Jesus is going to do with the power. Right. It's not your responsibility. You're going to be used because God is using you for the glory of him. Here yes. yes. said, wait a minute. I, I, I don't get this. And the crowd did not understand what was going on. They figured, like, I said, well, wait a minute. This wasn't on social media. This wasn't on Twitter. This wasn't on all the Facebook and all this other stuff you see on there. Wait, is this Jesus, John Baptist? What's going on? No, no, no. Herod thought he took care of the problem, but God is saying, no, you didn't. I'm going to show you something. Stage three. Verses 10 through 17. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Then he took them with him, and they withdrew by themselves to a town called the city. But the crowds heard, learned about it, and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. There's that passage again, the kingdom of God. And he healed those who, unless we go and buy food for all the crowd, about 5,000 men were there. But he said to the disciples, have them sit down in groups, about 50 each. The disciples did so, and everybody sat down. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven, he gave things and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples and sat before the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up the 12 baskets, full of broken pieces, and were left over I want to take a look at verse 10, is the first verse from this. He says, when the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. They already went out talking about the kingdom of God. Now they're coming back and they say, hey, we need to get a sit rep on what's going on. You know what a sit rep is? It's a situation report. In the military, that's what you give out. The command, they go out and figure out what's going on. They come back to the command group and tell the command group, hey, this is what we learned. This is what we learned that's going out there in this battlefield. And they bring information back to the command group. All right. So the 12 come back about preaching the word of God out there. And then they begin to tell Jesus, this is what's going on. This is what's going on amongst the people. I think this is very beneficial because they didn't wait until after Jesus died on the cross and the church started in Acts for them to start doing this type of information. They were practicing this stuff already because guess what? Remember he said he gave them all power. They walked with confidence. Did they have some pick up along the way? Sure they did. We all do. But guess what? God, Jesus gave them the power to move forward and in faith towards him. So he gave them the information in return and tell you, this is what's going on, Jesus. And I'm going to tell you what's, again, it's also privy to hear what you see in verse 11. 
He said, but the crowds learned about him and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. He didn't say he fed them first. He ain't going around saying, hey, look, you ready to eat? <laughs> no. He gave them the spiritual food first. Yeah. Took them where they are at and moved them past that point yeah. before they started getting the physical food. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's what we want to do. We want to go buy Burger King or McDonald's give them a meal instead of giving them the word of God that can save their soul. Nothing wrong with some fried chicken, nothing wrong with some greens, and nothing wrong with the food that's going on. But you have to give them the word of God in their life. Yeah. Amen. They might be hungry, but they're hungry physically, but guess what? They're hungry just as spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not talking about people who are not other faith. We're talking about people who can be other faith themselves. You are thirsty for the word of God. That's true. And you want the word of God to be filled within your body. Yeah. It's too Verse 12. Late that afternoon, the 12 came and he said, Send the crowd away so they can go to the surrounding villages and countrysides and find food and lodging. Why was he saying this? Because right now they're in a remote area. They're not close to where they could go and grab a meal at. They're far away from McDonald's or Burger King. They're in a remote area. You've been in a remote area before? Yeah. Where you can't get anything. It closed at 8 o'clock. <laughs> you ain't getting up at night. But why were they in a remote area? What's, what's, what? Because Jesus' time has not come. Herod's already saying, where is this noise coming from? Didn't I just kill John the Baptist? Who is this person they talking about? Jesus had to get the 12 and say, hey, let's, let's get back over here because my time has not come yet. There's some things that I need to get done here. I need to preach about it. I need to teach you some things before the time comes. You need to learn some things. Anybody here had a mentor in their life? Now sometimes we get away from that. We get away from having a mentor, somebody in our life that teaches some things in life. We, don't, we feel like we don't want that in life. But we need a mentor in our life. That's how you become who you are. That's how you become the best at what you are. One of the things I took pride, one of the things I like about the German culture is that. That individual, what they learned is they cracked. When there was an issue going on in the, in the apartment I lived in, and he already told me the landlord, somebody's going to come by and look at it. He came by, he saw it, he said, I can't do that. I do the lights. <laughs> I don't do the electrical part of it. What well, sometimes we have in America? Jack of all trades. <laughs> I can work a little bit this. I can work a little bit that. I can do a little bit this. I don't, sometimes I don't want you to do a little bit this and a little bit that. I need somebody who's on top of their job doing what they need to do. Jesus is preparing the 12 to be on top of their job, getting ready. Stage 4, verse 18 to 23. Once when Jesus was praying in a private and the disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others, the one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. Remember verse 8, Herod said the same thing. Verse 20, but what about you, guys? What do you say I am? Peter answered, Christ of God. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell them this to anyone. And he said, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of law. And he must be killed on the third day and be raised to life. Verse 23. Then he said to them, if anyone come after me, he must deny himself, take up the cross daily, and follow me. Peter's confession. Peter spoke up for the rest of the twelve about what he said. You are Christ of God. What is he saying? He said, you are the anointed. You are the Messiah. The one who's talked about. You're not Elijah. You're not John the Baptist. You're not just one of the prophets. You are the Messiah. 
That's when we understand who you are, good Jesus. Let's take a look at this verse, in verse 23, and break it down. He talks about deny. What does it mean by deny? You have to deny who you are. There's a denial towards Rainy Richardson if I'm trying to achieve following Christ. I got to let Raymond go. If I want to put on Christ's attitude. I got to put Raymond down. People say, well, no, you, it's your identity. Not if I'm trying to gain Jesus. Not, not if I'm trying to be in heaven. I can't turn around and say, it's me. All the things that I've done so far doesn't mean anything. The 20 years I spent in the military, the rank that I achieved, all those things doesn't matter. If I don't deny myself in front of Jesus. Amen. It is a complete dedication and obedience towards something. What is that something? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. But I got to deny it. Yeah. I got to let it go. Yeah. Who I am. The attitude. I can't sit up and say whatever I think. It doesn't matter what you think. Whether I'm in a business meeting, whether I'm in a brother's hood, wherever I am in the body of the church work, it doesn't matter. What matters is we focus on Jesus Christ. That's what matters. That's the point. We're trying to get somewhere. I'm trying to get to heaven. I'm going to make sure that my baby girl gets there long after I'm dead and gone. But the only way I can do that is I model that not. If I model that in front of her, that's the only way she's going to learn it. That's the only way she's going to learn it. If she sees some sacrifices in my life. Yeah. But if she don't see that, she was eating what you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm going to live for myself. No, deny. Right. And he says, take up the cross. Luke's version is the only one that talks about David. It's not in Matthew, it's not in Mark. It's only in Luke. Steros is the meaning word, word, Greek word for cross. So, what are you talking about in terms of the cross? I was talking to Brother Wilson about this yesterday. Sometimes scriptures, and let me say for me, I don't want to put that out on you. Let me say, sometimes scriptures can be just hard of trying to figure out what's going on. Here. We are reading somebody's mail here. We got to first understand what is it saying to the first century church. Yeah. To the first century, to that reader. We got to know who's talking, what's going on. We got to get to understand the background before we can say, how can I apply it to me? But what we do nowadays, we're ready to just grab it out and pull it to me. That's what we're ready to do with the Word of God. Put aside what Jesus was even saying and already put it in my day and time. Nobody here is walking around with a cross on their back. Nobody's here. And what the cross means to us now definitely meant something totally different to them in that day. Because yeah. Jesus hasn't died yet. Yeah. I have to put it in context. But we're so ready to say, apply it to me now. And you missed the whole point. Yeah. They understood what the cross meant. It was a way of degrading a person who was a thief, yeah. a slave. Some to the point that were naked on the cross. Some to the point where when they talking about bear your cross, the reason why they came is because you had the beam that you was holding as you was going onto that hill to die. So Jesus uses this word, stables, because they understood what the cross meant. They understood what it meant. And they understood that people have died. They had known people who died from the capital punishment of bearing the cross. Imagine. They may know a cousin, brother, sister, aunt, a friend that was justly, wrongly, justly done, killed for just what somebody wanted to do. It wasn't until later on they abandoned the crucifixion. And when the empress decided to become he was a Christian, they banned him. So it was too cruel. But to the twelve, it meant something totally different. 
And there's something totally different. It's liberation. And then he says, follow me. And I took the scripture just like it is. I know some people would probably have turned it around, follow me, deny, cross. The scripture didn't go that way. At the end it says, follow me. You have to come to understand when you got to cross over to something, the fatality of what you're doing. Think about it. Me personally, before I joined the military, the idea was there. But a couple things I had to get across in my mind before I could do anything. One of the things I had to say to myself, whoo, I don't anybody cussing at me. <laughs> I'm going to have to deny myself mm, all right. Come on now. before I do anything. A lot of people don't think about war, that you can die in the military because it's, they don't think about it. They say, this is not the Civil War. It's not Vietnam. This is why even Iraq came across. But you have to make sure in mind that before you do anything, you say, can I take somebody's life? Some of them just jump into something and don't even realize the things they're getting themselves into. Yeah. So before I can become a soldier and follow my directions of the commandments and leadership, I had to deny some things about myself and say, what can I do? How far can I push the limit of being a soldier? Jesus telling the 12, you must deny yourself. Take the cross daily and follow me. Don't follow me first. Come to understand some things about this life that you're going to deal with. He's predicting some things, preparing the 12 about the future. How he feels on that cross. I have three life applications. And then the lesson is yours. Life application one. In order to deny yourself, take up the cross, and follow me, <clears throat> you have to trust the Messiah. I can't do those things if I don't trust the Messiah. I have to know that he is the anointed one. He is Christ the Lord. So before I can say to anybody about myself, I have to trust him in all things. I give you an example. Probably said this before, but something just resonated. One particular time when I was in Korea, you know, I just had a bad supervisor. And but I felt that God wanted me there. I tried to get out from underneath her, really did. But God was like, nope. Nope. And that's another sermon about God will give you there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But we there at her house because she has a broken leg. She's there with her girlfriends. Of course, I, you, you, you in civilian clothes, I don't know what rent they are. She's an officer, I'm an enlisted soldier. So I probably, probably enlisted people. The point is, there are other people there that's gonna feel the, what, I, what was happening, what had happened to me. I had my E5 under me there. That's a no. And I got a battle line that's there. And thank God he sent him. She started going hard on me. When I'm saying hard, she was cussing. Calling me names. And I'm going to tell you, all I felt was Jesus. <laughs> don't do it, Rich. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't do it, Raymond. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. I only know from zero to 100. I don't, I don't know the in-between. I just got to know who you are. I just got to know who you are. But if I would have came out of myself, whoo, I don't know where I'm at in her house. It's dark. They big on most of them who's missing curfew than me if I cussed her out. Oh, you miss curfew? Oh, we're going we to try to get your brain. We're going to try to do everything you got to missing curfew. And I'd have been walking out there and don't know where I'm at, trying to get back on base. You got to trust the Messiah even through the 
tough times. Amen. Even times that you're dealing with. And part about denying yourself, you have to deny every poor. I ended up saying to her at the end of the, that, that year, I said, I'm the only one who could have handled you. Because I know some battles of mine that probably would have gave a piece of her mind. I know some battles of mine that would have answered the phone after hours, but I did. And she crying on the other phone about something that she's sick. She's hurt. She needs help. But my faith did not allow me to do that. Because I trust the Messiah through the situation. So whatever she needed, I did my part. I denied myself for the sake of Christ. But one of my soldiers said, I don't understand how you did it. I said, it wasn't me. Jesus. It's Jesus. You got to know who you hold on to. You got to really know. And trust the Messiah. Second application. My cross is different from your cross. Amen. You must believe that. Don't go and tell nobody, I understand what you're going through. No, you don't. Amen. That's right. Different situation. Different situation. You can be there, you can comfort, but don't tell the individual, hey, I've been where you've been. Mm -hmm. My cross is different than your cross. My cross is different from my wife's cross. There's been times when she's been dealing with something, all I can do is just sit there. That's and pray. You better learn to understand as a man, don't, don't try to fix it. Uh -uh. <laughs> it's not your job to fix it. It's not your job. Whatever she's dealing with, she'll let you know. Yes. But whatever she's dealing with, she's going to tell you because she's a child of God just like you are. Yes. Just like you are. Our crosses are different. It's different in life. We can still be there for each other. We still encourage each other. But we're not dealing or going through the same thing. What I just told you about, it's not the same thing you've been through. Even Brother Mothers, he probably had somebody, but not like that. Mm. <laughs> Cross is different. Third application. We all looking at the same thing. And that's the same thing. That's the beautiful thing about it. Our cross is different, but we're pointing in the right direction. Yeah. That, you, you don't understand what that really means. And I say, we're pointing in the right direction. What are you saying? What I'm telling you is, is that you ain't got to fight one another. If you fight one another, somebody's not pointing in the right direction. Come on, man. I'm not pointing right direction. I'm sorry, you're not. When you turn around, you say, uh, excuse me. I used to sit there in church. <laughs> you were pointing in the right direction. That's not the right direction. No, it's not. When you start arguing in the man's meeting about something that doesn't even mean anything, you're not pointing in the right direction. Come on, come on, bro. I'll tell him, Brother Wilson, you couldn't believe the things I've been through as a young teenager in life. I seen brothers put a 45 on the table. Better vote my way. <laughs> I seen that. I seen ladies have knives in their purse in the pews. I seen when they say, my singing group better than your singing group. I seen that. Guess what they're doing? They're not pointing in the right direction. Because if you were pointing in the right direction, you wouldn't be saying those things. You would be doing those things. And if somebody else is arguing, let them argue. And you can move on towards the Savior. And hope they can catch up to you. Be an example. Be an example. That's what we need more, church. Be an example. You have to be an example towards Christ and His people. See, what the cross meant to them means something totally different to us now. Because we know what the cross means. Jesus died. Died on the cross, took our place. 
But what's beauty about the cross? Leave that cross alone for a second. And think about what did happen next. Raised out of the grave. Yes, we focus on the cross, but we don't realize that Jesus came out of the grave. You know what that means? We have a risen Savior. He ain't dead. He's alive. Set in the right hand of God. Listen to all the things that we're dealing with. Telling God, guess what? I know how Raymond is. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. I'm here for him. Give him one more time. Give him one more chance. And God said, you're right. That's why I sent you down. See how it worked together? There's a reason to this. It's a reason to the end. Don't sit up here and think to yourselves, hey, you know, I got all these Bibles, all these technologies in the house, and I don't even study. Keep studying it. Keep your mind in the book. Because if you don't keep your mind in the book, you have problems. You have problems. If you're here today and you haven't done what you're supposed to do, I don't even tell you, you know. Get right. If you did something to your brother or sister in Christ, apologize, repent. Say, I've sinned against you. I thought some things, I said some things I shouldn't have said. I'm asking you for forgiveness before I even take it to the Lord. I want to get it right because we need to be marching together towards the Savior. Yes. And if you hear you're not a Christian, come on. I'm not doing this because I want you to. I'm doing this because I want you there in heaven with me. That's what I want. I used to downplay you on the thing because I used to think that if I'm not baptized with you, then I'm not a preacher. I had to let that go. My job may not be the person who has to get them to the step. Mommy just plant the seed. Let them turn around and move forward. You don't know what God's going to do in the rest of your life. But you have to make the start now. Don't wait. Don't sit on the bench. Don't say, don't put me in, coach. No, you need to get in. You need to get in the game. Whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, you need to get in. Take charge. And let Jesus rule your life. If you hear here, understand the same thing as you saw. Get your life right. Yeah, yeah. And what do we do? 
We take the invitation as it is a joke. Or we bypass and thinking that I'm going to be all right till the next day. I'm here to tell you, life is not promised. Yes. You can get on Facebook on the quickness and find out somebody who passed away. That's what happened yesterday with me. Where you? Gone. 51 years old. Yeah. Had cousins that were gone last year that was in their 40s. Gone. Yeah. But didn't give their lives to Christ. Mm -hmm. Didn't change their ways. Mm -hmm. Don't sit up here and say, I got time. You don't got time. You don't direct that. And we allow these denominations and other people else to do these things and say, hey, make a change. And they all come up on the, on the altar right here next to the coffin and they make a change. Or they try to make a change and they try to do this while we here and we'll just say, well, the sermon's over then. Time's on. I'll think about it later. They don't know what I'm living with. They don't know what I'm going through. Trust me, if you live long enough, we deal with the same problems that you ever have. I'm not perfect. I got issues too. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better Christian. Yes. Man. That's never going to stop until the day I die. Yes. Make the change. Your life. Your life is not yours. So you might as well give it up anyway. Take my life and let it be. Consecrate it, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of my love. Lord, I give my life to Thee. And I'm forever more to be. Lord, I give my life to Thee, Thine forever more to be.
As we move into the front part of the service, this part is about our giving. Scripture says in uh, 6 and 7, the point is this, the one who soweth sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who soweth bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compassion, for God loveth the cheerful gift, and at this time we give you a chance to give. Jesus rose with all power in his hands. Jesus The Lord's Supper was instituted on the, on the night in which Jesus was betrayed. We recognize, uh, the scripture we recognize is Matthew 26, starting at the 26th verse, and it reads, As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, break it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Let us pray for the bread. I must have the Father, I want to thank you for this bread which represents your son's body. We pray, Lord, that we take it in a manner that's pleasing and accepting by sight. In Jesus' name we do humbly pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. 
And he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shared for many for the remission of sin. Let us pray for the cup. We must have the Father, and thank you for this cup, brother, this your son, shed blood. We pray, Lord, that we take it in a manner that is pleasing and accepted in thy sight. In Jesus' name we do humbly pray. Amen. Members, would you please collect your attendance form to pass it to the two center aisles and the ushers will greet them at this time and they will also take the used community cups up. He's an old time God. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he's an old time God. Yes, he is. Don't you know? It may not come when you want it, or oh, you'll be there right on time. Cause he's an old time God. Oh yes, yes he is. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. Oh yes, yes he is. Oh yes, my Lord is a faithful God. Yes he is. Don't you know? Thank you. 
If not, brothers and sisters, please consider yourself dismissed for this hour. We look forward to seeing you the next present time.